Hello everyone, Mr. Terminal here for Cloud Infrastructure Services. In this video, we are looking into deploying the FTV, secure FTV server solution using SSL slash TRSS and on Microsoft Azure. This will be deployed on Windows Server 2019. And let's just look upon some of the features that it's well featuring. Some of the crucial ones are it supports FTV, obviously, over SSL and TLS. GUI configuration tool is there. You can set up speed limits. Uh, of course, encryption with SSL is there. And file name filters. Logging to file and remote file search. And one something important I want to highlight is the ports. So you are using deployment manager here, so it shouldn't be an issue. But if you are doing it manually or somewhere, you need to know these are the ports that are essential for FTP server for 2.1 and 9.0 for FTP and FTPS respectively. And 1.4.1 for server is optional, but it's for FTP server admin interface, so you gotta need it. And yeah, for passive mode for data transfer, these port range should be open. Once, okay, the market link is provided in the description. Let's just go ahead and create it. Let it create a new resource group. That's perfect, easy to maintain. Image, obviously, default size is okay. And this is the one you want to know for your Windows, for your VM. Let me just go with as your user. Select the password and yeah just go with review and create that's perfect once you have reviewed it create it and our deployment has started now this will take a while, so let me skip the video until this is done. Once the deployment is complete, we can go to the resource and our instance is running. We want to connect to it through RDP. And yep, that's perfect. Download the RDP file. Once it's downloaded, open it, connect to it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, don't use the default one. Is a different account than the one information you entered while creating the VM. That's the one you want to enter here. And just go with OK. It should connect. Yes. And your Windows 2019 server should start. So let's launch the server interface. And if we are connected, if you are not connected, simply go to file and connect to the server. And that should help you. You should be connected. You may see some connection errors and NAT errors. This is normal as we, we need to complete some configuration from the menu just here in the edit. Go for settings and in passive mode settings just make sure you are using custom port range and it's from 50,000 to 51,000 and here in use the following ip what you need to do is copy the i public ip address of the instance you just launched so let's go back to azure and we'll go to our instance so this is our public IP, right? Let's copy it. Q 
keep the same IP address once that's done. It's ready to go configure. Yeah, don't use external IP. Make sure that is checked and okay. We're done with that certificate. Next, what we want to do is create certificate, a self-signed certificate. It's needed by FileZilla server to accept the TLS connection. Click on settings and here SSL TLS settings. What you want to do is enable the FTP server, allow explicit and force prot p2 encrypt file transfers. This is okay, default 990. But here, what you want to do is instead of providing, we can generate a new certificate and 1024 bit is perfect let's just go with uk full state of province this you can fill out according to your organization needs i'm just going for random stuff now here in your former name server address here you have to copy the DNS provided in the instance. <coughs> Our DS, DNS name is not configured. We can configure it. And you can choose what you want to do. But if it's not configured, you can configure it and use it. If it's not, we can go with public IP again. I get that right yeah and leave this uh save the certificate file to wherever you want let me just keep it in the docs save it generate certificate certificates generated successfully great and yeah that's perfect okay now next thing we want to do is set up users and there are basically two options create local users and assign access or you can integrate active directly and allow users to use their domain logins to authenticate let's see if the option one first to set up local users go with edit users and here in the shade folders you could add a user let's call him tom and if you want to create groups you're good with that and once you've created the user you need to add the directory you want to share so let me just give him access to desktop and yeah that's how you can you can give him i can give him access to music directory and so on and so forth add another user uh jenna and she won't have the same access if you want to make things easy for you yourself groups are perfect she has access to download and so on and so forth these are local users whom you can give access to and in case of active directory in integration you want to go to settings and here in ldap you need to enable LTAP and you provide your server details and your domain, whatever it is. Port is obviously going to be 389. Keep that in head. This is your server. Whatever it is, uh, enter that here and press OK. Oh, of course, make sure to check enable TLS and S. So, we created a certificate for that that should work once that's done you can go to users again and in general you can enable account to provide on the password and here you need to check LDAP once that's done let me you they would have access to that as well so when you add user jerry you want to enable his 
account. Wait a second. You can give me my directory. Enable the account and here make sure you have LDAP enabled and that is enough. Local and LDAP enabled. Okay, and set as home directory and perfect. We are good to go with the settings. That's pretty much it from this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. And if this video helped you, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.